Welcome back to Band Aid with Doc Rock. I am Doc Rock, and we are in the recovery room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one of the favorite times of the show. They just got out of jail. No, they didn't, actually. They just got out of school this summertime. This is the incredible pop, pop punk sensation, the underdog revolution. And we got all the dogs here tonight, too. Man, this is great stuff. Welcome. Got out of the pound. Yeah, <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's good to have you here. All right, hey, we listened to, uh, to a couple of tunes uh, of yours just a moment ago. What were we listening to? Um, we were listening to two of the tracks off of our four-track demo. They were I Will Find a Way or I'll Find a Way and Now I See. Okay, cool. The uh, um, Good stuff. we got to find out who's in this band. I mean, there's gossip flying all over this town, but we were there on Nailed Town tonight. Last time I saw you guys, you were actually playing live at a gigantic affair out in Aurora. Couldn't even get near the stage. The mosh pit was filled, the fans were everywhere, the parents were face down, well, they always are. But the thing it is, it was a really exciting time. But the fans were really digging you. So, everyone wants to know who you guys are in the back. Sir, you are. I am Kyle Grandillo. I am vocals and rhythm guitar. Okay, and? Brian Kalinowski, bass. Bass, all right. Yeah. Austin Miyago, lead guitar and vocals. Okay. And I'm Harrison Day Miller. I play drums. I would hope so. Yeah, now, Boston's have <laughs> elimination. You know, there's got to be a drummer in the house somewhere. That's great. All right. All right. Everybody wants to know, how did you pick the name of this band? <laughs> now, all the names that are out there, the underdog revolution. Is there, you know, is there any kind of a social message along with that? Oh, you, know? you have, you haven't a clue. Oh, <laughs> there, that's not asking. There's a, story my life. There's a long... <laughs> intricate story behind this, but the short version is a good m musician friend of mine, Cole Messner, no. yes, yeah, right. <laughs> um, was less than pleased with the public school district that we attend on a daily basis. <laughs> Don't say the name of it, but okay. <laughs> and he started, him and a friend of his started this sort of group which they called the underdog revolution and they had a symbol that was a u connected to an r like that okay but the, the the hidden message was that the d was actually considered the top of the r okay. so and that's why it's hyphenated so that that d still counts okay so it comes from cole messner's sort of anti-establishment high school group that he developed in his junior year. I see. So, and of course, the, the D being up there, you know, it's probably a great point of average or something, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I can just walk you. Okay, you know, it, I, it's pretty, it, a pretty interesting name, you know, and I think it's kind of fun, you know, and those of us will remember the, you know, the, the 60, there was a 60s cartoon called Underdog, right? Right? Everybody remembers that, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it was called Underdog, it was, was kind of a okay. soapy little character, you know, and he was like a superhero and all that kind of stuff, fun stuff. So that's why I just, you know, I thought about that, but uh, interesting. The, uh, I'm curious. You say that you're, you know, you're, you're, you're pop punk, or punk pop, or pop punk. Yeah. How would you guys define that genre? Mm. Everybody uses the term, but I want. What's the, the the alternative guys here at the Underdog Revolution? How would they define pop punk? Mm. That's a hard one. It's fast, but it's catchy too. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's sort of it's sort of a mixture of melodic, but still the energy of punk music, yeah. but without all the crap. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so when, when you know, because you guys probably buy a lot of music anyway, you know, consumers of music and stuff. And, and let, let me just drill a little further. Then, what do you consider to be the crap in music? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> the list goes <laughs> on off names. No, the, the list goes the list goes on and on. But honestly, it's like I hate to talk bad against my like my sort of whole genre of music since I was 13. I understand, but it's okay. But, like, bands from the 80s, like the Sex Pistols, the Descendants, that were like, they had the right idea, but there, there was no, there was not enough music in it for me. I see. Okay. And Harrison and I are real big fans of Blink-182, and we believe that they are the epitome of pop-punk bands. I see, okay. There's just, so there's, there's more musical content, more musical uh, quality, if you will, in Blank, yeah, mm -hmm. as opposed to the Sex Pistols and all this yeah. stuff. Definitely a lot more melody and, like, a lot, like, you know, they, they, they kind of use, like, hooks and stuff, so, you know, catchy, right, catchy songs. Okay. Well, it's, it's got to be really tough, especially in the Grandello household. Yeah. And the legendary <laughs> Grandello family, your father, <laughs> obviously, you know, your brother, yeah. and everybody's so musical within your family. I need to be around your dinner table. It's got to be a shootout or something, you know, with everybody talking about artists. So, well, there's definitely a, uh, a war of the worlds when it comes to musical styles, especially when recording with my dad. He's got his 
60s recording techniques and I've yeah. got my thousands and up recording techniques. <laughs> they, they tend to um, clash. clash exactly. but, did you, but, but, but Kyle, did you ever think about, hey, you know what, Dad? The old analog days. Did you ever try any analog? Any analog recording of this stuff? You may be surprised. A lot of bands are going back to analog mm -hmm. because of uh, you know because of all the things that it, that it offers, the yeah. depth of the sound, all of that. You know, and a sense of uh, you know a sense of uh, uh, you know the, what would I say the, the the tracks take in such a you know wider range, and there's so much more warmth to an analog yeah. record. That's why bands are going back that way. So. Okay, just stay, keep the piece at home, that's all. Yeah. Okay. You'll stay in the will, and, you know, college will get paid for it. It's okay. Hey, you guys, uh, didn't you play the uh, the rock-offs this year? Two th the 2011 high school rock-offs at the House of Blues? Mm -hmm. What was the experience like? Tell me. I thought it was awesome playing okay. that huge stage, and the crowd was awesome, and the sound was great, and I had a good time. Were you really nervous? I mean, this is the House of Blues, yeah, a big was. crowd. The parents are in the back, okay? <laughs> your whole life is flashing in front of you. All your friends are there, okay? I was excited more than nervous, but I was nervous. I was incredibly nervous. Yeah. <laughs> this was before, like, when the band was first developing. We didn't even have Harrison with us. We had another drummer who was... I don't, nice. want, I don't want to okay. insult okay. him. Brand he was a <laughs> <after laughs> drummer. <laughs> but, um... So I was worrying about that, and before I knew that Austin could sing, I was carrying the whole load, and obviously as a teenager, my voice tends to slip and crack a lot, so, okay. yeah. and I knew that in the first song, I had a lot of high notes that were right on the brink of my vocal limit, so I was scared about that, and that's what really gave me the anxiety before that, but I feel like we still put on the best show possible for at the time, if we could go back and do it now with Harrison and with all the new songs we have, I'm sure we would have placed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Well, you know, it's funny, when you get nervous, your vocal pitch actually goes up. I'm living proof, okay? <laughs> but, uh, but it actually does go up, you know? And there's, uh, there's, you know, if you try to force it, I'm saying, short of, short of a bike accident and tight shorts, you're not going to raise your voice, okay? <laughs> so your pitch is where it's going to be, and that's going to be it. Harrison... Mounting those drums of the House of Blues, being the king, mm -hmm. sitting it back, all the TV cameras flying, all the fan cameras flying, the whole House of Blues in front of you. Wasn't that an incredible feeling? You know, and you're driving this band right from the back. Yeah, I mean, actually, I didn't, I didn't play with this band during the House of Blues. I, oh. I was in a different band at the time. Okay, it's and a weird feeling. Though. Yeah, we were in the rock up too, and it was incredible. But I tried to stay, you know, focused. I wasn't nervous really because you know, I'm in the back, so it's, <laughs> it's better than you know having to be Kyle, you know, on singing and. Hoping to get by a guitar. <laughs> sure. Well, you're right behind him. You throw a stick at him. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I understand. Yeah. The um, uh, with the rock off experience. What did you learn from the rock off experience? Well, I was. It was my second year in it. And oh, I see an old hand at it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just, uh, Woodstock's next. I know. Pitch a little Bonnaroo. He's going to do a scene. You know. But um, I mean, I just I love doing it. It's a great experience being with all the bands and stuff. And I actually got a high school internship out of it. With he did Frank, you? Yeah, 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 with Frank and Moff at Live Nation. Hey, congratulations, good yeah. man, good man. And he spent a lot of years at Live Nation. And he's mm -hmm. done a lot of you know a lot yeah, of great shows great. there. What did, did you learn anything more about yourself as a performer? I mean, when you look back at one of the hardest things you do is when you look back at those videos. You know, and look back yeah. at and even the folks who are sitting there late night, you know, Time Warner watching the finals. You know, and I'm just going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, did I look torpy, or I should have done this, or I should have done that. Do you, do you ever feel that when you uh, look back and or listen to any of your, your live stuff? It could have been better? Definitely. I sure do. Yeah. yeah. Good. I'm glad you're unanimous. <laughs> because every, I'm glad you said that. Because every artist feels that way. You know, all of the greatest artists out there, are, they're always nervous. It doesn't matter how big, you know, big, big their names are before they go on stage. And again, they always, you know, they always are very, very concerned about about their uh, their audio and their image and all. Of course, there are far big dollars on the line when you deal with the pros, so it's cool. You mentioned your logo, you know, um, that purple logo. Of course, you love the color purple and all that stuff and all. Who designed that logo? Is it? Um, that's not a Cole Messner masterpiece. Now. Well, <laughs> that 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 image itself was not the original design which often appeared on the walls of the bathrooms of our <laughs> <laughs> Florida ceiling. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Uh, that, I actually did that on Photoshop. I What I had to do was make two huge <laughs> letters and just sort of put them together because there was no way to get a text that would tie them together like that. I mean, I can draw it like okay. that, but I 
I just did it on Photoshop, and you know, if you click three buttons, you've got a cool effect, or if you don't like it, then you go back, and then it's just sort of a couple cases of trial and error, and... So you got what you wanted, and then you brought it to the band, and the whole band had to agree on the logo? I mean, do you all, do you all work in a sort of a democratic environment? We just thought it looked cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all. So there's kind of a cool, there's a, but there's a coolness factor that has to be you know, accepted by the, uh, Definitely. You know, by the band. No, it's a, very, it's a really cool logo. I also saw the video I watched of you, uh, oh, the, the music video to I'll Find a Way. Oh, yeah. Watched it a couple of times. Okay, and where was that shot? 